doing today? Come on, church. Can we thank God? Welcome, South Shore. God bless you. Welcome my wife, Tamara. So, 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 so excited to be with you. Uh, just before we get going today, got a little commercial for you, okay? We've got a new giving platform that I want to introduce to all of you. If you would, grab your phone. Grab your phones, okay? We know that everybody's living on their phones now. Uh, what we do together, I need you to know this in advance so that it doesn't kind of throw you off. What we do together is not you signing up for the giving platform. What it does is it gets you the information so that you can check out the giving platform and then designate as you would like to, okay? So everybody grab your phone. If I was texting my wife, I would put her name up at that bar. Instead of the name, I want you to type these uh, numbers, okay? 77977. 77977. And then in the message portion down at the bottom, put we are crossing, no spaces, uh, hit send. It will send you a link, and on that link you can designate a one-time gift, you can designate your uh, gifts uh, for a long period of time if you would like to. And then so for the last thing that I want to do now, okay, and you can look at that later. I hope that you enjoyed it. Super easy, very quick to do. Um, th the last thing I want to do is I want you to just trade your phone with somebody next to you, okay? Go ahead and trade your phone, all right? And I want you to give like you've never given before, <laughs> all right? I want you to give with liberty. You just give the way you've always wanted to give, okay? Just feel free. God bless you. Always easier when it's somebody else's money, right? Father, thank you for this great day. We pray that uh, we'd be able to get out of the way that uh, every person who's here, single, married, uh, that this message being for every person in its application, that all people would see and hear and understand what it means to be near you in peace and joy. For it's in Christ's name we pray and all God's people said, amen, amen, amen. amen. Again, this is for every person in its application, okay? And we will be teaching um, today from a book called Joyful Journey. This is that same organization ministry called Life Model Works. So you can go to their website and order this book. It's very small. It's easy to read, but it gives you the steps of what we're going to be teaching today. That's right. And also, uh, Re-Engage is a ministry right here at The Crossing uh, for marriages. Uh, this series is labeled Re-Engage, but it is for everybody as an introduction when we get into re-engage, sign up. There's going to be lots of people here at the Crossing on the Tampa campus, lots of people at the Crossing at the South Shore campus. Sign up quickly. The uh, signups are going to go fast, and then we won't be able to, you know, take it on the later end, okay? We've got a limited number. We're training lots of leaders. It's going to be fantastic. Just get in there early so you can get the help, all right? Now, uh, today, we're working with a basic assumption as we bring the message it comes out of Romans chapter 7, Romans chapter 7, and Paul says this, he says, and, and let's see if, I hope that every person, when you hear this, you can make an immediate connection. Paul says this, the things that I want to do, the things that I want to say, my intention when I come into a relationship or what I'm trying to do at work or what I'm trying to do with my kids, the things that I want to do, I often don't do. Can I get an amen? And the things that I don't want to do. The stuff I don't want to say, the feelings I don't want to feel, the hurt I don't want to get into, the things I don't want to do, I often somehow end up doing. And so that's the basic assumption that we start with to say all of us are dealing with uh, things at the soul level. And when we say soul, mind, will, and emotion, not your spirit that is saved, your soul. And hopefully today we can help with uh, helping in that area at least, okay? Here's the big idea. If you're uh, new to the church, what we try to do is take the message and boil it down to one statement, all right? Everybody say this with me. I can become, I can become all he created me to be. All he created me to be. When I experience, when I experience peace and joy. Peace and joy. Peace and joy, okay? In, in the Father's presence. In, in the, the Father's, Father's presence. presence. I can become all he created me to be. Uh, this, again, is... is uh, not some sort of pop psychology, and we'll explain more, give you the scripture, but you can become everything that God created you to be, the person that he wants you to be on the inside when you experience peace, when you get into relationship with him and you understand peace and you have joy in the Father's presence. You know, okay? why, you know why I love that statement? Why do you like it? Because <laughs> we have a sisterhood conference called Becoming. And it's all about becoming <laughs> all God's designed you to be. It's Hallelujah. at the end of September. Registration is online now. I know that was a shameless plug, but I had to get it in there. Shameless plug. 
She said, can I put it in? I'm like, oh, yes, go ahead. <laughs> oh, yeah. Again, not self-actualization. This is about being in the presence of Almighty God. Last week, we talked about quieting. And when we talked about quieting in peace, if you missed that, go back and look at it on demand. Today, we're going to talk about a concept called Emmanuel. Of course, that's the name of Jesus, God with us, and joy. Everybody say Emmanuel. Emmanuel. And joy. Joy. All right. So last week, we, we understood after we finished teaching that we weren't clear enough with what it meant to quiet. And so we had people coming up and saying, you mean I'm supposed to stay with, next to my wife, like nose to nose, <laughs> chest to chest, and stare at each other for 10 minutes? That's not what we meant. I had guys going, that's really weird. I'm not doing that. <laughs> so we, we made this statement that it's not cuddling because we were trying to help you understand that it's not meant to lead to something else. <laughs> but in fact, it is a cuddling type posture that you're going to be in in order to have that 10 minutes of quiet. But the whole point is that you're focusing your mind, you're taking every thought captive, and you're thinking thankful thoughts or memories that give you joy. What you're doing is activating the right side of your brain and building relationship without words. And then we did receive some messages this week of different people attempting the quieting. And one of the, um, the staff pastors sent this little video. It's a little um, gift. Said, this is, this is what it's like for me to try and quiet with my wife. <laughs> <laughs> Get over here. Let me love you. <laughs> Let me love you. So we hope that you didn't feel like that. <laughs> and we're praying that you will continue to practice. And <laughs> Quieting. Yep. So, sorry, baby. Oh, go ahead. Oh, go we, right did, we did put the information online. So if you go to wearecrossing.com slash resources, we have information there about quieting. And then we also have information about today that we're going yeah, to share. Yeah, Emmanuel. Okay, grab your Bibles. Go to Psalm 1611. Psalm 1611 in the Old Testament and Hebrews 12, 2. Both of those are NIV. We're going to get to those in just a moment after a quick little refresher here on Brain Slide. Right, so last week we talked about our brain, how our brain has two sides. The left side is the verbal, conscious side of the brain. It functions slower than the right side. And we call the left side the verbal, logical explainer. The right side of the brain is where our emotions, that's where our soul exists, our mind, our will, and our emotions. And it is much, much faster. There are four levels in the right side of the brain. The first level is our attachment center. That's our attachments. I'm attached to my parents. As I'm attached to my spouse, my children, my friends, my coworkers, um, the attachments. The second level is the amygdala. You've heard of fight, flight, or freeze. So your amygdala can determine in one-sixth of a second if an interaction is good, bad, or scary. If your amygdala decides that it's not good, your right side of your brain will shut down and the left side of your brain will take over. But what we want to learn here at the Crossing Church is to be our best selves in every situation. So we have to learn how to get beyond the amygdala being triggered and stay relational in the right side of the brain. So level three is our relational circuits. You'll hear us call them RCs. If our RCs shut off and we switch to the left side of the brain, we'll never get to the fourth level of our emotional brain, and that's where our identity is formed and strengthened. If we're going to live and be the best that we can possibly be, the way that God intended it for us to be created and live out the fullness of who he wants us to be, we have to be able to get to that fourth level of our brain. Okay, so now, having talked about the science, let's bring this down to a, a real applicable level. How many of you would like to be able to talk about parenting, schedule, money, intimacy, and remain really, really decent and sane with each other? Okay, now you just got it. Okay, what that means is you want to stay on the right side of your brain. And you want to stay on those attachments. Amygdala stays fine. You're not triggered. You're not upset at each other. And James chapter 1 and chapter 4 says that this is the reason why we fight is because we get hijacked on the right side of the brain. And we shift to the left side of the brain, which is where the gears are, the linear gears. That's why you can argue points with each other and leave being completely upset, broken burden, and fighting with one another, and you both don't understand. It's not just that she's different than you are, or your roommate's different than you are, or your parents don't understand, or your friend just doesn't get it. And so what we do is we move into all these places where our RCs, your relational circuit, shuts off. And when it shuts off, 
You have moved into the left side of the brain, and you might be right, but you're getting it all wrong. You might be right, but you're getting it all wrong because you're not building relationship any longer, and things get damaged really, really quickly. So here's some ways to know if your RCs are off. Here's, here's a ways to know if, if your RCs are off and they're put in first person. So I, me, you, we. Uh, if you say yes to any of these, your RCs are off. This is a checklist. You can go right back and look in the notes and you go, man, my RCs are off. Number one, I just want to make a problem or a person or a feeling go away. If you're angry about something, you want something to stop. I want it to stop. Number two, uh, I don't want to listen to what others feel or say, and I stop being able to see them. So at some point, you're triggered in that amygdala, second level. You jump over to the left side of the brain, and now you can't see or understand the person anymore. You're focused uh, on trying to get things to get out of the way. Number three, my mind is locked onto something upsetting. This happened to me a short time ago. I was with a couple of friends, and I really... Uh, had something I was trying to communicate, and when I did, I was triggered. My RCs go off, my relational circuits go off, and it, all I can say is it does a lot of damage. It does a lot of damage. So it would be any point at that moment, have you ever been in a discussion? Everybody with me when I say discussion? <laughs> and you say something like this over and over and over again, you said. No, no, you said, or that's not what I said, or you are wrong, or that is unfair, or you're acting like, everybody with me? Come on now. All right, number four. Uh, number four, I don't want to be connected to, and it's usually somebody that you love and care for. You can know that your RCs are off when you're talking about your friend, your spouse, your mom or dad, your aunt, your uncle, when you don't want to be around them. I'm, I'm, I, don't, I, don't, I don't, I don't want to be next to you. Number five, I, me, we, you, we more aggressively interrogate, judge, fix and try to focus on the problem and you miss the person. Number six, I just want to get away. That means to shut down completely. You want to remove yourself from the situation or you fight. I'm going to fight. You know, you're, you, you kind of get bowed up and you want to fight or you freeze and you're kind of deer in the headlights and nothing's going well. So the way that this usually happens in our house, if I'm not functioning in peace, I will respond by either freeze freezing, unable to interact or process, or I flight. I just want to get away. But Greg is a little bit different because his, he will want to flight, get away, or he'll want to fight. Yeah. So he's fight and flight. I'm flight and freeze. <laughs> right. So, and they're usually the opposite. Okay. Usually in your relationship, it's the opposite. Somebody wants to talk. The other person doesn't want to talk. So it looks like this. Hey, you want to talk to me? No, I'm trying to get away from me. <laughs> so you're going, so you're going from room to room going, Hey, what? Hey, Hey, Hey. And, and, uh, it's a the little, Lord says, don't go to bed that, in uh, anger. That's exactly get over right. here. That's exactly right. <laughs> that's right. And none of the responses are good. They're not good. Um, as an example, <clears throat> uh, this last Tuesday, it's a little bit challenging. We have such different styles when we come together to teach, and it's a joy and a privilege to get to do it. It really is, and such great balance when she's with me. Um, but getting going together um, is a process. And so what happens on the weekend is you deliver, you deliver multiple messages, and it's kind of an emotional outputting. If you've ever done public speaking, especially large crowds and so on. Or if you've ever had a baby. Or if you've ever had a baby. All right. <laughs> that's a whole nother level. That's an, that's an HNL. And yes, I do know how to spell. All right. Some of you are getting it right now. Whole nother level. All right. <laughs> so sorry, honey. You just got it. All right. Squirrel. Bring, bring, bring. All right. So it was Tuesday, and we had to power back up. We had to power back up to study and so on. And um, my soul, I don't know if you feel like this during the week sometimes. You feel a little bit tapped. You feel a, bit, a little bit drained. You've been through maybe some long seasons, or maybe it's a heavy season for you, and you just don't have the, woohoo! I can't wait to get right back to it. And I had a picture. We quieted, all right, which means we kind of were in that cuddling position, um, and we got real quiet before the Lord, five, ten minutes together. And, but I still didn't have peace. I didn't have peace, and I wasn't super joyful and charged, ready to go. And so I said to her, Can you, would you pray for me? And she prayed for me. I want you to know that the most powerful prayers that anybody can pray for you are those that love you the most. The people that love you and know you the most, they know all your stuff. Their, their prayers are the most powerful for you. And so I had a picture um, of uh, being a little guy, a young guy, and you could tend to, or I could tend to, um, get disappointed. So if your soul's not happy, 
you're not, you're not wanting all charged to do the right thing or do the thing you've got to do, you can get discouraged. How, how many of you, don't raise your hands. How many of you just, how many of you struggle with discouragement sometimes? Just give me a little shake. Just get discouraged. And if you let discouragement stay there, it's one of the emotions, you get discouraged and you just quit. So you're not your best you. You're not your best self. The other thing that happens, though, and that was typical in my life, is that I would just pull up my bootstraps and just go, oh, you know, I would try to get stronger. And I would power up. I'm going to do this, and I hope nobody gets in my way because it's going to, you know, I would have to get real strong. Okay, so that's not good either, is it? And a lot of people live on either one of those two extremes and you're not your best self. And so she prayed for me and I immediately had a vision of the Lord. I'm gonna tell you how powerful this is. And the Lord just came into the picture and instead of the two extremes, he took my hand and we walk right through the middle of the two perspectives. And so the thing that's been challenging and it's challenging for some of you, when we talk about marital relationships, you go, yes, I know it's awesome to say things like, how do you feel? And what would that be like for you? And that you, be, you are challenged because you're like, we got work to do, don't we? We have business to attend to, don't we? We got bills to pay. We got things to do. I want you to know what God was showing me in the picture the extrapolation of the picture is you're going to get everything done that you need to get done. Come on, somebody say hallelujah. hallelujah. And you're going to be your best self along the way because I'm the one leading you. Yes. And immediately after the picture, my soul had breath in my soul. I'm like, all right, let's get to it. All right, let's get to it. Let's go. And we had an incredibly productive day together. We did. God was so good, and we worked quickly. It was Very, really It was anointed. It was, it was anointed. It was because you prayed for me. Thank you, baby. Um, <laughs> thank you. Sorry, we're having some moments right here. You guys just, we'll be back in a minute. <laughs> so what he's describing is an encounter with Emmanuel. Um, Emmanuel presence. It, Emmanuel means God with us. And what we want to teach you today is something called Emmanuel journaling. Because just like last week when we taught quieting, and this week as we teach Emmanuel journaling, we're getting you into his presence and helping you to activate and strengthen the right side of your brain so that you can get to a place in your life where no matter what circumstance takes place around you in your life, you stay peaceful, you stay steady, and it's because of his Emmanuel presence and because of the work that you put in for yourself to get into his presence and remain in his presence. So Emmanuel journaling is just this amazing thing. Okay, so it's described in this book, but we also have it on the website for you. Um, I, I was always a journaler, even since high school, but I would journal, you know, the events of the day. And Emmanuel journaling has changed everything because I'm not just listing what happened during the day and maybe you know, a bunch of prayer requests where I'm doing all the talking, but now I'm journaling in the presence of the Lord and he's responding back to me. So I'm having an encounter with him where he's validating me. He's comforting me. The Holy Spirit gets to do what he's intended to do because I've entered into the Lord's presence. Um, I'm going to read a list of steps that you can find online. Please don't get lost in me reading the steps. I'm giving them to you First, because I'm going to read from my journal, and I want you to be able to pick up on the different points throughout my journal because of these steps, if that makes sense. I hope I'm not saying so many words that I'm causing more confusion. Okay, so you begin an manual journaling session with thankfulness, but not like a big long list of thankfulness. Pick one thing that you're truly, truly thankful for, and after you write it down, sit and listen. You're not, this is not a left brain activity. This is a right brain activity. So you're wanting to sit and really meditate on what you're thankful about so that you feel thankful for it. And then listen because the Lord will respond to you and you can write what he says. And then once you start writing what he says about your thankfulness, then you just keep flowing with these statements. I can see you. And this is God speaking to you. God can see you. So he can see physically what you're doing, but he can see what no one else can see. So he can see if you're sitting at a table, but he can also see if you're angry at someone, if, you, um, if your stomach is hurting, or if your mind is racing and you're having trouble focusing. So write down, what is it that God sees right then? I can hear you. God says, I can hear you. So he hears what we say on the outside, but he also hears the, what's inside, what's in our heart, 
what's in our head that we haven't said out loud. Write those things down. I understand how big this is for you. So what I have found is whenever I go into an Emmanuel journaling time, he already knows what I'm troubled about. I don't even have to tell him. But he knows and says, I understand how big this is for you. He validates me in my struggles. And then he says, I can do something about what you're going through. And so you write all these things out, and then you read it out loud. So you can read it out loud to yourself, but you can also read it out loud to somebody that, that you trust because that builds community. It builds unity. It's strengthening the right side of your brain. It's actually improving the relational circuits between you, and it's encouraging them to be able to experience the same joy and peace. Does that make sense? So here, I'm going to read from my journal. Yeah, something transformational happens when, uh, like the other day when she prayed for me and that occurred, I shared the story with her. And what it does is it builds the bright side of her brain because you're in community together and that's what we were built to do. That's why it's so powerful. So like Greg was saying earlier, um, preparing these messages is a bit challenging because we really couldn't be any more different in in how we prepare a message, how we present a message. Like, that's why I can't share his notes on his iPad. I still do paper. I still have, like, all these different colors where I'm putting little clouds around certain words. You know what I'm saying? Like, we're just, we're very, very different. And um, we've done this before, but it's been two or three years, so it's not like we're in a regular rhythm of it. And so it, it's been, it has felt very stressful to me, mostly because I want to do a good job. Mm -hmm. And I talked last week about how I have, um, my pattern is fear. And so my response to my fear is to try and be perfect because if I can get it right, then I won't be afraid. But I obviously cannot get it right all the time. <laughs> no one is perfect, mm -hmm. which then just causes me more fear. So with that in mind, I went to journal to the Lord this week. Thank you, Lord, that Greg and I get to serve you in full-time vocational ministry. There isn't anything else in the whole world. We want to do more than serve your people and see lives changed. God, I am so excited and grateful I get to spend this, speak with Greg for this marriage series. And then I listened, and God said, My precious Tamara, I am proud of you and Greg for your years of serving me in good times and hard times. Your faith has grown as you've learned to trust me in all things. I have continually worked through both of you because you have remained teachable. I can see you coming to me in the mornings at the kitchen table or in your car because I do my quiet time before I come in the office. I see you making our relationship a priority. I see your heart to know me intimately, not just check off a list on your to-do, not check off a box on your to-do list. I can hear your thoughts about this weekend's message. I hear your prayers for those who will sit under your teaching. I hear how badly you want it to go smoothly and make sense so lives will be changed. I understand how big this feels for you. It is a tremendous responsibility to teach the things of the Spirit. I'm overwhelmed. I'm overjoyed to be with you and Greg throughout this process. You aren't trying to preach concepts. You are applying them and practicing them together. I am not impatient or demanding. I'm right here. I open the hearts and the minds of my sons and daughters. I draw them to the services. Tamara, you are not a disappointment. You are my dearly loved child. I delight in you every day. These marriage weekends are not about performing or getting it perfect. Your part is to surrender and abide in me. The results are up to me. I will do the rest. Hmm. You can encourage her. That's good. Good stuff. <laughs> It's great. a little bit scary it's a little, to read a little, from your I mean, journal. Reading to from your journal is pretty, pretty personal <laughs> stuff. And mine would be completely different. I, I, I would have like four words. God, this hurts. You know, help, <laughs> help me. Yeah, uh, so please and, don't be intimidated by all <laughs> my words. I was already a journaler, right? <laughs> but so I can't, I can't really put into words how I felt after that. The peace and the joy, the fact that I get to c come do this with him. And yes, I still am nervous before I'm up here and all that. But, but I get to enjoy it and I don't have to worry about the results. I don't have to worry about whether you get it or if I get it right or you understand it. Because he's, it's his. He's got to translate. And um, can, like, can you imagine having encounters with God like that all the time where he just comes mm. straight to your deepest struggle? Mm. 
It's just, it's so powerful. And it's important for you to understand when you start to, uh, to practice this, everything God says to you, if you're questioning, like you write something down, you go, mm, I don't know if that's God. It will always agree with his word and his character. You will always have the result of peace and joy. If you feel condemnation, that is not God. Now he can use this time to lovingly correct you, but it will be loving. Mm -hmm. It will not, it will be loving toward repentance. It will make you want to repent and change, turn and go the other way. Will not be condemnation. So mm -hmm. that's very important. I'm super amazed as I've done this over months, how these particular themes are coming up. And one in particular is he's really teaching me what it means to abide in him, which is in John chapter 15, if you want to write that down and look at it later. And then the other thing is how he's almost every single time he tells me I am not a disappointment. Because in, in my performance, in trying to get it right all the time, in my perfectionism, I feel like I'm a disappointment. And he is speaking to me, you are not a disappointment. And you know mm -hmm. what that is? Mm -hmm. That is the fourth level of my brain mm -hmm. where my identity resides. He is strengthening me so that I can be my best self in all situations. So you know when you tell your kids, you're brilliant, you're bright, you're handsome, you're strong, you're beautiful. Okay. You want to say to them everything that you really know is true, but they sometimes have a hard time. And if there's somebody at school that says, you're a little chubby or you've got freckles or whatever it is, that's the word that sticks with them. And I can say, you can say to your spouse, your roommate, your friend, your mom, you're beautiful, you're brilliant, you're incredible, you have so much inside of you, God is so big in you. But when God says it to you, yeah. it changes everything. everything. But when yeah. God says it to you, when you know, mm -hmm. church, it's not, it's not that you have a linear thought, God, I'd be great if you said that to me. It's that you see the scripture, you understand your identity, and you feel on the right side of your brain at the fourth level, this is who I am. Yes. That'll change your life. Yes. And that'll change your life forever. Uh, all of this is on uh, the website. We've got a little uh, link for you for Emmanuel, how to do it, what she just described, and also for uh, gaining the concepts we taught about last week. I, I want to... I was yep. just going to say really quickly, if you attempt this and you get frustrated, you feel like there's like a block, like you, you're trying and you're not hearing anything, we have something called Freedom Foundations. It starts again in September, and I encourage you to go to Freedom Foundations because that is where you can help tear down those walls so that this you'll be able to practice this. It'll flow. Yeah, that can remove some barriers so that you can flow in Emmanuel journaling. Um, last week, we had some comments. If you were here last week, I want you to know we're talking about biblical joy. We're talking about joy, non-circumstantial uh, peace that resides inside of you. Joy isn't circumstantial. Joy isn't happiness. Joy is having the presence of God even in difficult times. This is not pipe psychology. This is not Eastern mysticism. This isn't spiritism. Let me give you the scripture to back it up. Psalm 1611 says this. If you got a Bible, grab it. In his presence is the fullness of what? Joy. Everybody say joy. joy. In his presence is the fullness of? Joy, that's where joy happens, in his presence, even in difficult circumstances, Psalm 28, 7. For the joy of the Lord is our strength. How many of you want to be strong in your marriage? How many strong in your family? Strong in your faith? Strong when you're in challenges? Strong when you're fearful? Strong when you're depressed? Strong when things are dark? Strong. Uh, what's the secret to strength? Joy. The joy of the Lord is your strength. The joy his presence is your strength. It's what imbibes you. It causes you to have the anchor in the right side of your brain to say, this is who I am, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Oh, great king. Uh, I, I don't know if we're going to live or die in this fire, but I know this. I'm not worshiping that God. I worship one God. So that's how, that's how to respond in difficulty is to say, now, it would have been a whole different thing if they would have started cussing at the king, right? Somebody help me out. That's what we're doing to each other in our nation right now. We have forgotten who we are. So we're not even civil to each other anymore. And Christians, believers, it doesn't matter what color you are. It doesn't matter what gender you are, who we serve. There's just one God, and we serve Jesus, who's the Christ. Amen. That's it. <clears throat> Hebrews, Hebrews 12, 2 says this. For the joy set before him, Jesus... Emmanuel, God with us, Jesus endured the cross, 
despising its shame. He despised the shame of the cross. You know why? He was perfect and he was sinless. He could have sinned, but he passed the test that you and I could never pass in the flesh. He passed it for us. And he endured the cross. Why? For joy. Despising its shame, he was crucified and now he's resurrected and seated at the right hand of the throne of God. And so he went through a difficult trial in his life that he rather would not have gone through. God emptied himself into the Christ head, in the head emptied himself into Christ, and Christ died on our behalf. Why? For joy. For joy. So that in the middle of the trial, Jesus remembered what it's going to be like to be in eternity, sorry, to be in eternity with the heavenly father and to have passed the test so that all of us could go into eternity with him. That's why he could be his best self when things were not going well. That's why this message is so transformational. So how would you remain your best self? I want to ask you the question. We're talking about Jesus in the garden of Gethsemane. It's right before his crucifixion. Everybody starts, you know, betraying him. They start moving away from him. How would you handle a situation or circumstance where you're Jesus, you come to the earth, you love people enough that you're about to lay down your life, you come to deliver them, and they lack spiritual capacity. They don't see, they don't understand. They're operating in fear and denial. They're in rejection. They're in self-protection, and they betray you. You have to put yourself in Jesus' shoes. You have come to die for them, and they are plotting your crucifixion. Would you remain your best self? Or would we fall into the category where we would say, well, how dare you? And, and, and no, I can't forgive you. And well, no, you're this race. Or no, this is your gender. Or no, you've made those mistakes. Or no, this is my history. I want you to know Jesus experienced all of the big six negative emotions. He had shame and anger and disgust. And he said to the disciples, could you not pray for me even one hour? Remember they fell asleep. Can you imagine your life being on the line and you're counting on guys to pray and intercede for you and you come out and they're, you know, they're eating a sandwich. How you doing? What's going on? Are you troubled? I don't know. I'm watching CNN. What's up? So, okay. What about the next one? When we talk about um, sadness and despair, Jesus said, my soul is so troubled. He said to the men, my soul is so troubled that his capillaries had ruptured and where sweat would have come out of his pores, he was bleeding. Now, I'll tell you, that's some, that's some intense shame and despair, is it not, church? In fear, he said to his heavenly father, Jesus experienced fear. God, if there's any way for this cup to pass from me, I don't want to go through this test, but not my will. Come on, church. Not my will, but your will be done, God Almighty. That's what it means to remain your best self when you're struggling in deep sadness, fear, anger, disgust. And there's an emotion called joy. There's an emotion called joy. And the Lord said that we could learn to suffer well. Come next week. You're not going to want to miss it. You can be your best you. It would be amazing if you had trouble at work and you still got promoted. It'd be amazing if you fought with each other and you didn't understand, but you treated each other well and you bonded even more because of your difficulty and you loved each other even in spite of your differences. Wouldn't it be awesome? It'd be awesome if we did that in our community. It would be awesome if we did that in our schools. It would be awesome if we did that with our friends and our families and our neighbors. I don't understand you, but I love you. <clears throat> say it with me say it with me I can become all he created me to be all he created me when I experience when I experience peace and joy peace and joy in the father's presence in the father's presence all right um, and I want to give you this last little piece of science and then a kind of a closing statement here um, the gentleman that we're working with the brain science and the mapping that we're, we're talking about he said I've worked with people who've been incarcerated They've had severe trauma, even ritual abuse. And ritual abuse could mean even satanic ritual abuse. And so trauma to the nth degree. If you have lived through trauma where you were violated or something like that, we talk about freedom because you can't get into these rhythms and paths because you feel like you're going to be mistreated. There's a lot of spiritual work to be done. He said this. He said, if I could get somebody to experience joy, not talk about joy, not write about joy, but to experience the joy of being in the presence of the Holy Spirit and in community with God for five minutes, three times a day, he goes through exercises. They engage the right side of the brain. They don't shift to the left. They go, here's what happens on the left side of the brain. This is not going to work. This is foolish. I'm not going to make it. I don't know if God's real. I don't know if this is going to help me. It's always been this way. That's all over here. Over here is 
where the emotion of the Holy Spirit comes in and says, I, I love you so much that your history and your past falls away in my presence. I can and will deliver you. I have loved you since the foundation of the world. You are my precious son or daughter. There is no weapon formed against you that should prosper. I am for you. I am with you. I love you. Five minutes a day, three times a day, he said in one month, everybody say one month. He said 90% of their emotional baggage that they carry around with them every day falls completely off of them. Five minutes a day, three times a day, in the joy of the Lord. 95-minute sessions can lift out of you a lifetime of hurt because he's that powerful. And what's happening is you're actually growing a part of your brain that does not exist before you experience the joy. You physically, they physiologically can study the brain and watch a portion of your brain grow and receive grace that's never, never been documented before. And, and the brain science and the mapping and all those things is just proof that we know how powerful the Holy Spirit is. We've always known it. Joy is the way to change your life. Start to Emmanuel. Start to go through the steps of, of learning what it means to interact with God and take your big six emotions to him and say, God, I... This doesn't feel very good. I don't want to live like this. How many of you don't want to live like that anymore? I don't want to live like that. I want to live by the truth of God. Joy is the way to do it. Joy is relational. Joy is contagious. Joy is transforming. Joy starts with a smile. Joy helps our brain grow better than any health food. Joy reduces stress. Joy has more social impact than looking sexy. Joy improves our immune system more than exercise. Joy raises brighter, more resilient children. Joy protects marriages. Joy improves resiliency after disasters. And joy spreads to transform lives. Can we thank God? Can we thank God for his joy? Amen. Amen, 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 amen. All right. Both campuses, here's what we, would, we want to do. We want to uh, profess and confess the author and finisher, the perfecter of our faith. His name is Jesus. So let's say this together. Lord Jesus, today I give up. I give you all of my hurt and pain. I give you my sin. In exchange, I receive your presence. Come on, I want you to think about that for just a moment. How much... How much do you need peace? How much do you need joy? Joy in your relationships, joy on the way to work, joy at work, joy. Circumstantially, here's the truth. Lots of times things don't change very quickly, but you can change very quickly. Lots of times work doesn't change very quickly. Lots of times relationships don't change very quickly. Lots of times uh, uh, um, the traffic that you're in or the, the little inconsistencies, school, whatever, all the changes, you can't make all that go away. But what you can do is get a person in the midst of the trial. So say, I receive you, Jesus. I receive you right here, right now. And I'm trusting you. Come to live inside of me. In Jesus' name. If you prayed that prayer, both campuses, somebody watching at home, wherever you're at, you prayed that prayer for the first time, we're going to ask you to be real bold and brave. On the count of three, I'm going to ask you to raise your hand, hold it up. We're not going to objectify you. We just want to celebrate with you. Both campuses, here we go on the count of three. If you trusted Christ for the very first time, raise your hand. One, two, three, raising them up nice and tall, wherever you are, wherever you are. Got you, little guy. Okay, I got you, got you. Who else? Far left. Got you, sir. Who else? I got you, sir. Who else? Who else? Who else? Okay, he's just clapping. Good. Good, good, good. More hands. Anybody else trust in Christ today? Come on, be bold, church, in the name of Jesus. Anybody else? Man, you just, you just, um, what we want to do, yeah, you, you, you made, if you're trusting Christ, you made the most important decision that you'll, that's the most important relationship you'll ever be in. Ever, ever, ever. So what we're going to do now is we're going to stand together. Prayer partners, you come forward. It's very important to stay in an attitude of worship right now because there are so many messages of the Holy Spirit speaking to so many people. The reason why we're standing is to give you 
ability to, to move into the aisle, to move up to the altar, and to come for prayer. So many needs with marriage, finance, relationships, okay? While we sing, the encouragement is for you to come forward so that we could pray for you, and Pastor Toussaint's going to dismiss. God bless you. It's been a privilege to be with you.